There are many who, in an attempt to show atheism to be intellectual, have claimed that Albert Einstein was an atheist. However, the brilliant scientist said the exact opposite. In the view of such harmony in the cosmos, which I, with my limited human mind, am able to recognize, there are yet people who say there is no God. But what makes me really angry is that they quote me for support of such views. Einstein also said, We know nothing about God and the world at all. All our knowledge is but the knowledge of school children. Possible we shall know a little more than we do now. But the real nature of things, that we shall never know. Never. He even revealed his insightful mind with, I see a pattern, but my imagination cannot picture the maker of the pattern. I see a clock, but I cannot envision the clockmaker. The human mind is unable to conceive of the four dimensions. So how can it conceive of a god before whom a thousand years and a thousand dimensions are as one? When asked to what extent are you influenced by Christianity, he said, As a child, I received instruction in both the Bible and the Talmud. I am a Jew, but I am enthralled by the luminous figure of the Nazarene. When asked if he accepted the historical existence of Jesus, he replied, Unquestionably, no one can read the Gospels without feeling the actual presence of Jesus. His personality pulsates in every word. No myth is filled with such life. Albert Einstein wasn't a fool. He believed in God. He said of the Creator's existence, I am not an atheist. I don't think I can call myself a pantheist. The problem involved is too vast for our limited minds. We are in the position of a little child entering a huge library filled with books in many languages. The child knows someone must have written those books. It does not know how. It does not understand the languages in which they are written. The child dimly suspects a mysterious order in the arrangement of the books, but doesn't know what it is. That, it seems to me, is the attitude of even the most intelligent human being toward God. We see the universe marvelously arranged and obeying certain laws, but only dimly understand these laws. He continued, What separates me from most so-called atheists is a feeling of utter humility toward the unattainable secrets of the harmony of the cosmos. In fact, Einstein tended to be more critical of debunkers who seemed to lack humility or a sense of awe than of the faithful. He wrote in a letter, The fanatical atheists are like slaves who are still feeling the weight of their chains which they have thrown off after hard struggle. They are creatures who, in their grudge against traditional religion as the opium of the masses, cannot hear the music of the spheres. In other words, because of their hatred of traditional religion, they can't see the genius of God's handiwork. So it's interesting to notice that at the age of 34, a young Albert Einstein proudly boasted of something that seemed right to him. I have firmly resolved to bite the dust when my time comes, with the minimum of medical assistance. And up to then, I will sin to my wicked heart's content. As Albert Einstein aged, he became far more philosophical. To one bent on age, death will come as a release. I feel this quite strongly now that I have grown old myself and have come to regard death like an old debt at long last to be discharged. Still, instinctively, one does everything possible to postpone the final settlement. Such is the game that nature plays with us. It seems that Albert Einstein spoke biblical truth unawares. However, it isn't nature that seeks a final settlement, it's the law of God. Like a criminal who's transgressed civil law, Einstein, like the rest of humanity, was in debt to eternal justice because he had transgressed God's law. This great debt that he spoke of couldn't be satisfied with mere silver and gold. It's a debt that demands capital punishment. It calls for the death penalty for guilty transgressors, an eternal damnation in hell. Its terrible decree demands the soul that sins, it shall die. But it's a demand that was fully satisfied by the one who cried from Calvary's cross, it is finished. It was paid in full by the precious blood of Jesus. For Christ also suffered once for sins, the just for the unjust, that he might bring us to God.